Hello and welcome to Adikami's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss current affairs and gazette for 7th March 2022. Before we begin, let me welcome all of you participants here. Hi Amlan, Bhabani, the first ones to join. Netra, Vakra, Kim, good evening. Ashish, four answers to write today, great. Hi Hima, good evening. And uh, who do we have? Hi NS, welcome. You've written answers, but a little slower than others. But nevertheless, good points. Very good points mentioned. All right. And then Pooja, good evening. Not written today. Why so? Hi Vivek, you also late. Peace lover, no worries. But next time you got to write. All right, let's begin then. Thank you. The few people who have written, around 10 people, I think it's powerful enough. Thank you. So let's begin this conversation. Today, what do we have? We have quite a few articles. Feature news on Global Plastic Treaty, a treaty in which all the nations have resolved to eliminate plastic pollution, make the treaty binding around the whole world. But let's see if they are able to do it. Let's understand this in the feature news today. Then we have three updates. Three updates from one from economic sanctions. Are they powerful enough or not? And what are the reasons that these sanctions are getting imposed? Another article linked to this is the, the effectiveness of International Criminal Court. We will understand the difference between ICJ and uh, International Criminal Court. We will also understand the no-fly zone that is being contemplated to be put on uh, uh, some places in Ukraine. We will understand that. So uh, that will be a term in itself. Revamp distribution sector scheme, another blockade to this scheme by the government itself. We will understand what these updates are. These are the three updates that we have. This day in history dedicated to Govind Ballapant, the first chief minister of Uttar Pradesh state. And uh, image of the day on a very species found in the south. Terms and concepts, no fly zone, northern river terrapin. We will see these small turtles and how they move from one place to another in a matter of small time, hundreds of kilometers swimming. So we'll understand their significance. And then a, a term today, Noku Kuli. If you're from Kerala, you would understand what it means, Noku Kuli. And Sri Mano Raksha project by Ministry of Women and Child Development. Three editorials for today, one on uh, the virtual workforce and making them more efficient. The second one is on crypto policy. And the third one is on uh, the digital push, which uh, the budget has, is, has, has not done effectively. The case study is from Jharkhand, a person preserving old art. All right, so let's begin this discussion. The first snapshot, the first update is on economic sanctions. Did we have some questions from past? Let me see. Quite a few slides for you guys. This is the presentation for you today. Mm. All right. I have some questions. I will discuss them at the relevant times. We have some questions by Nishtha. We'll put them at the right places. Oh, yes. Babani had a question. We will discuss that. All right. So uh, the first update is on economic sanctions being imposed by US, UK, European Union, all these countries. And are they proving detrimental to Russia or not? Because one of you, uh, Babani, very well said that even when sanctions have been imposed, it is only in US dollars. But Russia is able to transact in rubles or Chinese currency yuan. Then what is the impact of sanctions? Then let me show you this image, my dear friends. This is the economy of uh, Russia. The stock market is a very big representative of the economy of any country. And because it, refre it, it reflects the, the current market capitalization of the biggest companies working there. right? And this was 2013. This is uh, 2017. This must be 2014. Because immediately after this, we saw a small dip here, right? This was because of sanctions imposed by countries. This was this is Russian economy that we are talking of. Just like we have Nifty 50 or Sensex sensitive index for 30 top companies by market capitalization, Bombay Stock Exchange. We have an index in Russia, right? IMOEX.ME. I have picked it from uh, uh, Yahoo, but then Russian. And then this is the point which reflected almost a maximum of 4238. This is the index that they have, right? So 4238 units. But then it dropped to 2470 right now. Almost almost to 60% of what it was at the peak. And the peak was not far behind. It was the October 21st, 2021. 
just just uh, uh, four months five months back it touched a peak russian economy just like the whole world was peaking it did touch peak but because of increased present of uh, presence of russian military in in uh, in uh, in and around uh, uh, in and around ukraine you start seeing the dip in economy and this is the time when they start when they started you know imposing the war like conditions on ukraine that you start seeing a huge dip right this is around 3500 levels and dropping to 1000 levels i don't want to explain the economy here all i want to say is that you can very well see the impact and so even if they are able to transact in the local currency it is still showing a huge impact on the economy i will want to explain that a little more here but before that let me show if you think that the economy's impact is not on usa no it does impact usa economy as well now if uh, you are able to see this clearly this is america's uh, s p 500 index right s p 500 index and it touched a high of 4725 units but then it, it did come down 300 units just because of the impact of war usa would not have had a lot of impact it would have but not as much as russia but this economy also came down right cryptocurrencies came down india's economy came down there there must be many factors because of it this is not just the only one russia is not the only one there are other factors for example the consolidation of the uh, global market especially the federal reserves they they've expanded so much they've printed so much currency it is leading to inflation and they also want to consolidate it right there is uh, in america the middle class has become poorer than uh, the, than the previous times and uh, this has led to a lot of inflation especially real estate right renting houses education and no proportional increase in jobs or uh, salaries so you see the real estate has gone high even renting, I'm talking of renting because in America, a lot of people rent homes, can't afford homes at uh, urban areas, right? And education uh, has gone very high, but then jobs are limited and the proportional growth in salary is not uh, much and the salaries itself are less, right? So one con consolidation of uh, US economy, federal reserves, right? Taking back the money and increasing the interest rate, this is one. And of course, the markets have also gone high and over and above the Russian economy. So this is the impact. But then if you see, um uh, the impact on russia russia is around i, I had mentioned this right R russia is around two percent of global gdp and india is more than that india is around 3.27 percent and this is 2022 2021 2022 just right now right this was an image which was released just a couple of months back and russia is around two percent of global economy so it does have a certain say but not as much chinese economy is 15% and uh, we have US economy around 25%. See, so a small impact, nevertheless, it does feel the pressure, especially the Russian economy. But what have they done? They have started to transact in the local currency. If the SWIFT payments were restricted to them, they, they had already initiated their own payment system. So they had a way in which they could uh, face some buffer because of these shocks. And what are those buffers? Let me show this to you. So, uh, one of them was F SPFS system, SPFS banking system initiated by Russia itself back in 2015. They knew that in future, if there are sanctions imposed on them, they would be initiate, initiate their own system for payments, right? This is an alternative for SWIFT pay pay payments. And then MIR card payments. Now, lately, even payments by uh, uh, the popular uh, intermediaries like uh, uh, Visa, like MasterCard, both of them are American companies. They're intermediaries, no? They help in payments across all the platforms, banks, uh, Amazon, and other e-tailers, e all of them. So they also refused to uh, transact business with Russia. In this case, Russia was already prepared with Mir card payments. Not only this, China itself had initiated all the, not only with Russia, China had already initiated many banks, specially formed, so that they could transact with countries like Iran, countries like North Korea. All they had to do was activate the same banks for payment with Russia now. So they are already able to transact. But the issue here is that Russia does not have diverse entities in which it can trade. Russia only has got few entities in which it can trade. For example, some minerals, some diamonds, uh, uranium, wheat and oil, majorly oil. Right. So China already has had a pact with Russia. That is the one which is probably sustaining Russia for this time. I have already mentioned that Russian economy is one tenth of the GDP of European economy, right? So if you look at uh, this percentage that Russia carries, 
around 2% of global economy. But when you see other countries, Germany 5%, Italy 2.44%, Spain 1.6%, France 3.25%, UK 3.3%, Belgium, Switzerland. See, these are the European countries, most of them. Sweden, all of them, right? So when you see so many Swedish countries, this is almost 10 times the economy of uh, uh, Russia. No, uh, Russia. But then Russia does have more military sanctions, more, more military presence with itself. And uh, one thing that, that, that leads so, to fracturing of European Union is the presence of US itself. Because of this, these European countries have not been able to form a uh, united you know, association amongst themselves. So uh, this is the impact, but you can very well see the impact on Russian economy despite uh, uh, these new systems, you see, because the Russian economy is not able to diversify, right? So this is also a part of the question that was asked, right? Are these sanctions serving the, something or not? And you can also very well see the update here, right? The countries which have imposed sanctions on Russia, they count for 34% of world GDP. China is not the one, so, but America itself is 25% of world GDP. I showed that to you and many economies in Europe. now. Even when China is not imposing curves, there are updates that China is, you know, uh, refusing to transact business through AIIIB. AI, <laughs> not AIB, right, AIIB, Asian Infrastructure Investment Banks, right. So, uh, they are not ready to transact business with the uh, Russian, uh, Russians right now, right, because they see that they, they could be, you know, problems in transacting money, it could get caught up in the whole uh, supply, right. So, uh, Economy sanctions are defined as withdrawal of, of customary trade, not only customary trade and finance relations, slowly and steadily diplomatic sanctions were also imposed. I, this is not just right now, but Russia was already under such kind of stress since 2014. So wherever Mr. Putin would go, you would see that he would be sidelined in the meetings, COP meetings, sidelined, nobody talking to him. And then uh, this not only happens to him, this happens to anybody who has, you know, uh, done something which is uh, worth uh, condemning internationally, right? So, Saudi Crown Prince and he was known for one popular assassination. You know the name of the person who was assassinated? I think he was assassinated in Turkey, in one of the embassies in Turkey. And it was a very popular story how it was, his body was later, you know, uh, uh, his body was later, uh, how it was um, decapitated and uh, put under, uh, possibly put under uh, acid and then, you know, uh, there was no sign of his presence. He went under the, into the embassy, but it was not recovered ever. So many of the countries, they directly blame, blame the crown prince here. And this is how the sanctions work, right? Diplomatic sanctions, economic sanctions. So uh, this is what has happened. In fact, what is happening between Russia and Ukraine right now is even pathetic. So uh, the city of Maripol, right? So there, there have been three attempts of uh, ensuring that there be no uh, no war between Russia and Ukraine, no, no weapons be fired between these two countries, especially in that city, because that city is now become uninhabitable. This is what is being heard in media, uninhabitable, that there is no presence of water, no presence of food. In fact, Indian citizens who are lost in these cities, which are very close to Russia, they are not even able to cross the border, right, uh, having hardly any food. And then there is also less understanding about how many students are available at what places. So, problems being faced by a lot of people, they say even if you venture out of the, of the homes, it is possible that you would be, uh, you'd be dead if you venture out, right? So, better not go. But then, uh, this is what Russians are doing. They've also attacked uh, a couple of, uh, you know, places with nuclear energy and then, so that is the reason that economy has further dipped. Not only Russia's, Ukraine as well. The Ukraine is also being supplied weapons, medical aid, relief, all that, but then, like, to no avail that. Ukraine has requested NATO to introduce a no-fly zone over, over, over itself so that Russian aircraft, Russian missiles are brought down, right? But then, but then European economies say we won't impose a no-fly zone because if we do that, there will be direct intervention in the war and then we will be participants to this war. If no-fly zone is imposed on Ukraine or these areas which are occupied by Russia, suppose this is the area, in this case, any aircraft flying, specific aircraft flying here, NATO can put, you know, put it down, how through anti-aircraft guns, but then what would be the reaction from Russia, will it keep quiet, doesn't look like in the present circumstances it will be, so this is the reason that European economies, despite wanting, they are not able to do the same, alright, and there is something called as extraterritorial sanctions, secondary sanctions, what are these sanctions, these are the sanctions in which 
if I am operating, for example, if I am operating with the, uh, suppose this is Iran and this is Italy and this is USA, right? If I am transacting business with Italy and I have sanctioned uh, Iran, I am not happy with Iran, I have sanctioned Iran, I will also impose some sanctions on the uh, secondary sanctions, secondary boycott. I would also boycott Italian products. I will reduce my business with Italy. So this is how Italy, Italy will also get impacted and slowly and steadily they will also impact the business with Iran. So this is called as extraterritorial sanctions or secondary sanctions. This is the reason that you see that many companies, many American companies, they have stopped business, doing business with uh, Russia. So popular examples are Google itself, Google, Facebook, all of them stopping to do business with uh, Russia. All, all the big companies, they have stopped their business right now. And so uh, somehow you see uh, these extraterritorial sanctions also working in the multipolar world. All right. How sanctions impact an economy? You have seen that already, right? Some articles related, all this is only flowing around the world. So articles, all of them are related. The second update is from revamp distribution sector scheme. It is interesting to see you people write such diverse points about uh, the issue with the uh, electricity distribution companies. The question posed was uh, very diverse here, by the way. The question posed was the whole electricity sector, right? So you can't restrict yourself to only distribution. This is to deal with a lot of things with electricity. All right, let me see. Yeah, Jamal Kashogi. Yes, thank you. Sir, Bhavani says, Sir, but what is the role of NATO regarding this? Regarding no-fly zone? Any country can impose no-fly zone. Americans can say no-fly zone. So it has got its regional influence no, over, over those surrounding areas. It can impose that, right? So that is their attempt to, it can be, see these kind of sanctions are imposed in an attempt to uh, curtail the war, de-escalate the war. But is Russia going to listen? No, not in this case. It could do this on, you know, specific countries and localities. Uh, like for example, uh, there was a new no-fly zone for Indian planes in Pakistan. All right, no problem. We will fly, you know, from, uh, from around you. So it, it would have, it, it was actually taking more time if you wanted to go to UAE and earlier the flight route would pass from over uh, Pakistan, 12 kilometers above Pakistan. You know, so you can't fire at that height, but you can definitely, in, you know, have your uh, uh, ballistic missiles, you know, pointed at us. So uh, India also imposed these kind of uh, sanctions on Pakistan. So these kind of sanctions, European Union could have attempted, but they did not get into this adventure. All right. The second update is on revamp distribution sector scheme. So uh, this scheme is largely about the metering, right? Initiation of new metering in uh, uh, in around all the uh, you know places in India, especially the uh, Amrut cities, 500 Amrut cities to begin with. So these these new meters would be electronic meters. They would ideally be connected to each other, lesser human intervention, not only connection, but they would also be smarter than before, right? So, uh, but then there are a lot of challenges in, in this new particular scheme. The challenges could be of these nature. I have put them down, all of them, right? So first of them, shortage of chip itself. It was placed as the last point, but I believe that this is one of the strong points. Shortage of chips for having new meters replacing the old meters. The idea, as, as I mentioned, was to ensure that these smart meters would ensure that electricity is paid on time, right? So before, okay, let's let's discuss something more important than this before this. So whenever you look at metering, there are two things in distribution sector, power distribution. Oh, this doesn't expand. There are two things. The first thing is ATNC losses, right? Aggregate uh, technical and commercial losses. These are AT, ATNC losses. This is one of the important things to look at when we look at revamping the electricity industry. And the second one is uh, ACS and ACR gap. ACS, I had explained this. ACS and ARR gap, right? I had explained this as well long time back, but then it's time to repeat it. ATC is aggregate transmission and uh, commercial, uh, technical and commercial losses. Technical and commercial. That means those places where the electricity gets passed and attenuation happens. Attenuation means because of 
you know conductivity issues sound issues there is a loss of uh, electricity technical losses and commercial losses theft right not being able to meet at places all those are losses covered under atnc losses this needs to be curtailed this is huge as they mention here right now to pan india levels of 12 to 15 percent by 24 25 they want to reduce this loss to 2 12 to 15 percent that means imagine the kind of loss atnc is facing right now right so this is in transmission this is in the phase of distribution of power to people and the second one is uh, acs and a arr gap right this is the revenue realized by the company in doing the business revenue realized suppose if i am transacting business for 1 1 rupees suppose that right but then if i get the uh, you know revenue at only 0.75 paise so i face a loss of 0.25 paise is it not true right so average cost of supply minus average realizable revenue the difference between that this must be re reduced if the difference is reduced this will start giving slowly a steady lesser losses and then generate profits for the company profit is a long distance at least right now reduced losses right so for that one of the ways was to ensure that meters are put if meters are put smart meters are put they would ensure that less human intervention is there and people are paying for the services and bills are getting generated right now that is also not happening in the country to ensure that happens this scheme was initiated right revamp distribution sector scheme and part a of the scheme was financial support for prepaid smart meters and the second one was training capacity building and other support activity activities but the government has now suspended this program until uh, some specific date because of said reasons right so what are the reasons let us understand that right now all right smart meters see have you seen if you have consumed bit busily electricity only for 1000 rupees 1000 rupees and you've seen that the bill was for 18000 rupees has it happened to you yeah it can happen so when the meters are not integrated properly with their substations with the consumption this is what the problem has is right so one of the problems being faced is this itself when you look at the kind of problem they say shortage of chips to install these meters especially in the urban areas where the a t and c high losses are high where the losses are high they want to look at these the solutions first but then since there is shortage of chips they are not available this is one lack of communication by some smart installed meters you don't have to remember all of them but then you must know largely that these are the common problems that are being faced and even then government has rolled out a program like this lack of communication only by some smart meters communication not happening how will bid get generated right uh, then we have operationalizing the prepaid functionality in these meters the prepaid functionality you pay in advance and then uh, you start getting the uh, meter connection right so we don't pay post paid we pay before we get the services so this is operationalizing it and then when you want the connection to be you know initiated or cut you will have to ensure that it is done manually so what is the use then we wanted it to be automated this is not happening right now interoperability problems right because this head this head end system that you see it is not getting integrated with all the suppliers of electricity then how is it going to work so these are the common problems that uh, 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 and the billing problems being faced this is why government said abhi nahi ho payega thoda ruk jate hain let's hold for a while we'll start off later the government has suspended smart metering bids under revamp distribution sector scheme till 15th march due to multiple issues look at these multiple issues all right so this is the update here and the aim of the scheme this particular scheme was to uh, improve operational efficiencies and financial sustainability so do remember whenever we speak of these kind of schemes this is the power distribution companies and then i always keep telling look at it holistically right so we are the consumers power distribution companies power generators and then uh, power transmitters these are all different companies right these are largely psus ineffective inefficient and also populist working under populist demands because there are citizens and bills have to be paid power generators largely coal driven this is the issue power distribution this also power uh, these are the companies of power transmission so pfc power finance corporation right and many other companies who have outsourced the business to private parties right so these are the companies in power transmission they also face certain losses
ATNC losses. All right. So you can you should look at all of it holistically. The third one is uh, effectiveness of international criminal court. Before this, we must know what is international criminal court. Now, uh, there are two institutions. One is the International Court of Justice and the other one is International Criminal Court. Yeah, seem very similar, based at the same place, Hague in Netherlands, but then quite different from each other. International Court of Justice is an organ of United Nations. This is a body, this is an independent body associated with United Nations, right? Not only that, International Criminal Court, the name itself says criminal. We are going to, we are going to you know, give justice for criminal offences. And Court of Justice largely deals with civil cases. Usne mera tiffin chura liya. Isne mere ko thappad mara. Usne mere ko baal kicha. You know, they encroached in my area. Right? So, taken to the United Nations International Court of Justice. The other person ensured that their patent rights were, you know, uh, impinged. All those things are taken to places related to International Court of Justice. Civil, civil matters largely. Then, uh, here the membership is different, the membership in International Court of Justice is different. This is related to United Nations, around 190 bodies. But here there was a Rome Statute passed. So this was formed right after the uh, initiation of the uh, United Nations, so 1945. Those were the times after which ICJ was formed. And this International Criminal Court was formed only in 2000s, post 2000s after the Rome Statute was signed and there are around 100 plus members of International Criminal Court. So, so when what what are the what are the times when you know ICC can operate and ensure that it does justice to criminal offences when members are associated with these countries in any offence members are associated. This is not only about membership. This is also about the person who is heading ICC, the person who is heading the ICC prosecutor. If they say that they found a criminal offence happening in a particular country, they can initiate this. Now. See, Ukraine is not a member of uh, ICC. Russia has only signed the ICC, but it has Rome statute, but it has not become a member. USA has also not become a member. India has not even signed the statute. So can ICC do these kind of criminal investigations in India or USA or Russia? It is totally subjective. It is dependent on various factors. One of the factors is that the prosecutor of ICC would say, ah, yeah. from you know, Suomoto, they would say, yeah, I have seen that this is happening. There's a powerful person. They say, I've seen these uh, issues happening in Ukraine. We will investigate this. Earlier also in two instances, they started to investigate the crimes which have happened in Ukraine done by Russia, right? So after about Crimea, imagine there would be some minority population living in Crimea would, which would favor Ukraine. But then have you any, ever heard since 2014 that Crimea faces some dissent? No, we did not. Alleged, 18,000 people died. Alleged. Not only that, if you look at a place like uh, Chechenia province, Chechenia region in Russia, 80,000 people died because of, uh, you know, Russia imposed wars and sanctions and, and military uh, operations. So, uh, there are times when the International Criminal Court uh, prosecutor only initiates the proceeding even if the member, even if the countries are not members, right? There are ways in which the non-members also want to obey International Criminal Court, they would initiate proceedings then also, right? So this is largely International Criminal Court, far differentiating from International Criminal, uh, International Court of Justice, all right? So mandate is different, their operation is different, but yes, based at the same place. But are they effective enough? Not at all, they're not. They've got budget of $200 million. You don't have to note this, but just know this. But they have prosecuted hardly tens of people, 10, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 people and largely from Africa only, right? America against America, no sanctions imposed, right? Even when war crimes were committed in Afghanistan, there was a say that yes, something happened in Afghanistan, something happened in Iraq and other places, but then there was no sanction against or ICC, you know, initiation against USA. So this is one thing. The, you know, African nations only are the ones which have been investigated and only a few handful of people have been ever prosecuted. Many of them also been, uh, you know, uh, released, right? So this is the update from this particular place. 14,000 people, separatist, separatist or pro-Russian, right? Later killings, 
what are the major criticism of ICC? Delayed justice, 20 years of getting initiation and only 10 persons convicted as of now. Poor return on investment. You pay so much, $200 million and then what you get is just a few people, right, who are majorly from Africa. You're not imposing these kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, accusers on the developed countries. But when you see, when we look at the definition of terrorism, right, the reason why USA and many other countries do oppose this definition of terrorism is because according to that definition of terrorism, USA's forces itself would have conducted uh, terrorist activities, especially in Afghanistan. There are other, other countries as well. There are countries uh, in uh, South America, right? They also oppose it. There are other countries also. There are two, three groups of countries which oppose the definition of terrorism, which India also says must be a part. A standard definition must be laid down, but then other countries impose and ICC is quiet about all of it. Success rate is very poor. Skewed imprint, largely committed in Africa. Those crimes are being looked by ICC. Right, so this is the, what do they do? Crimes of genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, aggression, this is what they look at, right? At present, 123 countries are members. India has not even signed the Rome Statute under which ICC was formed. India, China, Iraq, North Korea, Turkey never signed it, right? So, all right. Investigation by non-member states. Investigation of cases can happen there also in three ways. If LS crime were perpetrated by non-members in member state. So, if, if India is not a member and if, suppose Belgium is a member, India committed a crime with Belgium, then India can be investigated. This is what it means. If the non-member accepts court jurisdictions, even if India is not a member, but say we respect ICC, then it can be given to, uh, India will have to accept, you know, the ICC jurisdiction also. And when the Security Council authorizes, the Security Council says that ICC, please investigate this matter, they will be investigating. Right? Apart from that, uh, they have also accused Russia of war crimes, no? So, we should, we should understand there are three important uh, reasons under which war crimes can be actually uh, looked at. Proportionality. Suppose Ukraine only had fist fight, but you initiated a bazooka weapon with you, right? You, you just bombarded the other person who was ready to be in a fist fight. So proportionality has to be there. Otherwise, this can become a war crime, right? A serious criminal issue. Precaution. One must know the difference between who do they have to fight and who they have not to fight. So precaution must be there. And precaution if was not taken, then in that case, uh, you know, this can be a part of war crimes. And distinction. One must know the difference between civilian population and the military population. So, when you see places like Maripol, this is uh, Maripol's buildings itself. When this place, see, uh, this is the reason that you see during a war, this is a very good example of a hybrid war, right? Where, where you not only see the weapons being, you know, or fires being exchanged, you also see a lot of misinformation. We also see cyber attacks. Remember, we had done this editorial previously. We also see uh, uh, a lot of... Uh, intelligence gathering on both the sides. Right. So when we see all this and we also see non-participation of uh, uh, the other countries here, non-participation of uh, stakeholders, non-participation of stakeholders only. When we see this, we see that war crimes could be committed by the, uh, the party which is larger. And here also we see that possibly Russia is saying that we want that there should not be any, there should be ceasefire, but they are getting violated. Who is violating? Nobody knows. Is there United Nations there? No. Is there NATO there? They are also not there. But world powers are biased. See, what is being said in the international media is that Ukraine, they have been fooled. They have been fooled. They should have, you know, because NATO should have participated. No. When NATO was ready to help, when NATO was ready to induct uh, Ukraine, Ukraine's President Zelensky is all the time saying, impose these sanctions on Russia or impose a no-fly zone, they're not ready. If take us inside European Union in an emergency way. You can do it. They're not doing it. So, it's going nowhere. Yeah. Right? So, this is the update. I'm not taking sides, just telling you the, uh, you know, reality what's happening and we don't have to take sides here. We have to be completely impartial, neutral and state both the sides objectively. This day in history dedicated to Govind the Valla Pant. He was the home minister of our country, fifth or sixth home minister of the country. Along with that, he was the first chief minister of 
the country and can you people tell me where is go where is govind the ballab pant sagar which which district is it in in uttar pradesh if you know a, a very important place this particular site where this uh, reservoir is located is a very important site for production of electricity in india because uh, of the kind of region it is it is devoid of the the nearby areas are very important for uh, energy production employment and uh, mineral resources presence and then uh, uh, factories especially the capital goods factories you must locate this particular place where govind ballapan sagar is located and then look at the regional study of that particular place very important for india's growth govind ballapan dedicated to him because uh, this was the day he passed away in 1961 61 because of illness all right feature news on a very important uh, uh, treaty global plastic treaty uh, all the popular nations 175 countries came up together india also said you know they are trying to have a treaty in which they want to ban the use of plastic altogether or have a complete end use uh, agreement on plastic waste management right so imposing sanctions all those things financing everything has to be done by the year 2024 in fact there are only few things that un discusses like for example you know uh, uh, freedom of navigation in marine areas plastic pollution terrorism climate change these are the major thing they discuss plastic pollution is one of them so we'll understand what this is about and uh, moving ahead to the next article is images of the day new gin berry found in south of india kanyakumari wildlife sanctuary tamil nadu right edible fruit and this is something that uh, other species as well for example butterflies like species they also thrive upon feature news terms and concepts no fly zone we discussed no fly zone in the backdrop of russia's attack on ukraine nuclear power plant nato has planned to impose a no fly zone over russia but this was only yesterday no fly zone today i have read the latest nato is reluctant to impose the no fly zone over russia a no fly zone also called as exclusion zone is a territory established by military power over which certain aircrafts are not permitted to fly so what that the territory is not their own it is it could be of their ally as well so this is the update here right it is usually set up in an enemy's power territory during conflict have a look enemy's power territory during a conflict so those regions which russia has occupied of ukraine those specific areas and when you look at the map of uh, 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 europe okay let me show you that place when you look at the map of this place the reason why maripol is uh, very much in news when you look here crimea already taken by russia and then luhansk donetsk already under russia's influence if russia occupies the place very near to it that is maripol right slowly and steadily it will have a contiguous zone a contiguous zone for itself right so that it is able to handle the crimea the sea of azov and all this area by itself there will be no presence of ukraine so possibly occupying this whole region first depriving it of water all that why do i strategize america russia's war you can yourself find what, what it could do it is already happening here so when getting into uh, you know the complete of ukraine might not be as as as, as important as priority as this part is contiguous zone development this was a thought that many thinkers were saying russia would do but they have invaded deep inside as well so no fly zone northern river terrapin what is it critically endangered turtle species how big is it you will be able to see the size of it right in this image this is the size can you guys see this these are those kind of turtles which are just similar to some specific fishes which breed at a particular location and then they grow at another location can you name that particular fish elish elish right highly used in west bengal and uh, assam and even bangladesh right this fish has been also a, a part of diplomacy because uh, they, they are gifted by bangladesh to india can you name the that that particular fish or what rate is it sold at now similarly similar to that fish we have northern river terrapin they 
they not only live in the Gangetic uh, uh, river basin, they also go up down the stream. And now, lately, these critically endangered northern river terrapin, they have been also tagged. They have been tagged so that one could know the, the places which they live or thrive in, what, where they reside, where they flow. And they were tagged in India. They flew, they, they migrated 100 kilometers plus in a matter of days. And uh, this is how government is trying to know how we can preserve these terrapin. See, uh, many of these species are indicators, bioindicators. So is turtle, right? Bioindicator of a particular place. All right. So GPS transmitters on northern river terrapin in Indian Sundarbans, tracking the movement of species across international boundaries. One of Asia's largest freshwater and brackish turtles. Freshwater and brackish both. Hilsa, Elish, thank you, Amlan. Hiranjan, yes, 2000 plus, 2000 rupees plus kilo. I'm not talking of terrapin, I'm talking of uh, Elish and Hilsa. All right, so popularly used during the times of uh, Durga Puja. The third update is. So do remember Northern River Terrapin, many of these species of turtle, they are endangered or critically endangered. Similarly goes for the uh, rhinosaurus as well. All the five species of rhinos around the world, all endangered or critically endangered. Very important. This day in history, uh, all right, this is uh, Noku Kuli. This is a term which is widely used in Kerala. If you are from Kerala, please tell us what is the meaning of this. For common parlance, let me explain to you. There are associations or groups which manage the daily wage workers. So, yeah, there are, there are states where associations have a very strong role to play, no? Trade associations and then uh, worker associations and uh, uh, we have a lot of associations everywhere, right? So, when individuals' rights are not being taken care of well, associations or trading bodies or uh, uh, their... Uh, Trade representatives, all of them take care of this, right? So, in this case, and this is what they charge for. So, they charge no kukuli, that means some minimum amount of wage you will have to give for the maintenance of that association or that trading body. Now, jail term will be given if no kukuli is asked for, right? Or charges referring to loading, unloading and supervision charges demanded by workers, even if, if, if nobody has been hired. Now, they can only pay when they are hired, no. But if they are not hired, why do they pay for maintenance of an association? So, this charge will become illegal. It will also invite jail term and all that. So, Kerala has imposed these kind of fines. Right? Practice as militant trade unionism. Trade unionism. Militant trade unionism. Alright? Imprisonment up to two years, all that. Loading and unloading worker means a person engaged or employed indirectly or through a contractor and they will not be paying these people in case they are not employed on that particular day. These are daily wage workers we are talking of and this kind of, uh, you know, uh, asking for this kind of money is illegal. Stri Mano Raksha project, Ministry of Women and Child Development launched this particular project. This is one stop center. This project is Mano Raksha. See, the, you know, counseling and understanding and Handling of all the grievances, the sudden grievances that people fall into or whatever they are emerging out of, all of them have to be handled under Sri Manoraksha project. A new project being launched by Ministry of Women and Child Development, one stop center for people in trauma, people going through multiple issues or destitute people, right? So, training them for as security guards, cook, helpers, all of them. So, this is a part of rehabilitation as well. One stop centers for rehabilitation. Do remember this word? This is also popular because now we are, you know, almost around the Women Day and we would have many, many topics coming up. This is a very good keyword that you could use for uh, talking about uh, women rehabilitation, especially for those who are going through multiple challenges. All right. What's next? What is next is a small update for you people. That is this. Success seems to be connected with actions. Actions. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. Right? So, that is an appeal from my side to you people that you people must keep writing. If we spend time writing, just a couple of minutes to spend your thoughts on what you can exercise, that would be great. Looking at the answers is also a very good thing. But if you get into the habit, it is like an addiction itself. 
you'll start exercising your mind and it will actually be a little painful in the beginning because you have to retrieve cells you know those neurons will get activated electrons will flow in your brain but once you start this exercise confidence will automatically develop and it will start to reinforce your thoughts right and these thoughts will make you even more powerful because you will start thinking on the lines of how to reproduce an answer see right now you're as i mentioned you are in the process of taking in but then upsc is not about taking in it's more about taking out taking out and being more productive so study only five hours a day not asking for more study only six hours a day but take out the best of it that's what you people are doing in answer writing this is what i initiated this for taking out the best so success will seem to be connected with your actions it will actually be it will not be incidental it will be a mere habitual repetition that you do and this is where you will celebrate wins and in case in case you get into some kind of stop gap right which could be called as something called as failure be kind to yourself right not all the days you can perform na the bazooka won't operate all the days the weapons will not operate at the same pace all the days no problem but then treat yourself uh, well at those times meanwhile there is an opportunity here utilize this and you people are doing this for a couple of months to 3 months it's a great uh, uh, development that i see all right so good job let me see hi sangeeta good evening मक्खन सिंह पे सर आपकी सैलरी कितनी है हमें क्या मिलता है आपको क्या मिलेगा हाय रवि गुड इवनिंग हाय तियाशा गुड इवनिंग गो बोथ ऑफ यू लेट टुडे हाउ टू रिमेंबर केस स्टडीज स्टार्ट अप्लाइंग देम दैट्स द बेस्ट वे टू रिमेंबर देम स्टार्ट अप्लाइंग देम तो इन टुडे फीचर न्यूज वी विल अंडरस्टैंड सम केस स्टडीज एंड दैट्स वाई आई वॉन्ट यू टू स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट दोज केसेस एज एन एग्जाम्पल you start looking at them as an example and slowly steadily all you have to remember is just three points about a case study right so one case study for example if you look at the case of un sanctions icc itself icc is not operational body so you don't have to explain about icc three points about icc only 10 war only 10 convicts right 20 years of functionality 20 years operated only in africa this is the second point and the third point could be the humongous uh, uh, expenses 200 million dollar per annum this is their budget so icc case study involves three things one 10 persons con convicted uh, the second part is convicted only in africa and then humongous budget this is the african case study icc case study right similarly when you look at the case study of uh, uh, example the uh, species northern river terrapin northern river terrapin if you look at this the three parts of this case study this is a case study of preservation of this terrapin right so talk about talk about the species being a part of fresh water and saline water then in the next point you could talk about uh, that you know tags have been put and this is how the government is trying to initiate this project to preserve so this is a small case of preservation when you talk of preservation of uh, biotic species this is a good case study for that so cases can be developed provided you have two or three different data example will be just like this example of northern river terrapin being preserved in sundarbans right but then one can develop cases only when they have little deeper knowledge that we have right now see can you can you people lose weight in one day if you exercise for 10 hours that particular day no it's not possible but when we exercise for 20 minutes a day 20 minutes a day and this is for uh, uh, 30 days 30 days this comes to 10 hours itself 30 days of exercise 20 minutes per day this comes to 10 hours and 10 hour could be exercised for one day also for example marathon or ultra marathon runs but then this is not going to make you lose weight this one is consistency is going to help you right not the strength but being consistent is going to help you so therefore look at those cases from the point of consistently using them in examples in answers data as well i have seen you develop so that's a good initiative all right all right what else
if taking tiffin is a criminal offense then you guys go where you want to go would you please help me i'm not getting to download today's yes nirenjan today's newsletter is not available that's why i'm sharing with the website right now it will it will it will it will show up on the website in a short while all right Vivek says Trump even said to impose sanctions on ICC staff pursuing investigations in Afghanistan war crimes. Not only that, not only that, these members in International Court of Justice and many of the members of the tribunals, they are from you know USA has got some rights to instate these people, and USA is not you know instating only. When the members are not sufficient, how will it run? Right. Niranjan, the Gazette is available from Monday to Friday. In the evening around 6 o'clock it comes and 6 o'clock we also start. No, saying UP and Allahabad will not help. Son Bhadra, yes, yes, yes. Netra, Netra and Hima, good. Okay. What else? Yeah, these guys will like the initiative in a short while. If they like the case study, they will like this initiative. Let's see. So, what is there in the editorial of the day? Today's editorial is on increasing productivity in the as the virtual workforce increases. Now, hybrid mode of work also has initiated. See, you people are studying from homes, no? Most of you are at home. So, this is the virtual way of doing things, right? So, not only doing what is designated, what is the mandate, but utilizing the virtual workforce as well. This is how people are working also. And in this article, it very rightly says that we got to set KPIs, key performing indicators. This is what I keep saying to you as well. Perform, but then know what are your performance indicators. For example, if you are in Delhi or if you were in your state capital and studying for UPSC examination, you would have had some performing indicators. For example, giving a test every day. For example, speaking to some of your uh, you know friends, right? And knowing what is in the market. Right? Or drinking tea in the local tea shop, all those. These are key performing indicators. If you don't go out and drink tea, you wouldn't know what's happening in the society. Similarly, when at home also, you must do this. This is equally applicable for anybody else who's working from home. So key performing indicators must be established. There must be appreciation for people who are working from home. Right? And uh, uh, this is what is the hybrid system of work about. This is what largely this editorial summarizes. Right? Successes to adjust to this new normal and enhance productivity of virtual working. See, so how did we enhance the productivity? In in actual classes also, people ensure that there is some time given to the student where they write answers. We are doing that here, right? So enhancing productivity of virtual working, yes, happening here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Financial Express. Then key performing indicators, each to each their own. You set your own targets and try to finish them. If there is a lagging. If there's a lag, then you people also look at how to finish it up or seek help right here in the group as well. New innovative, innovative ways, right? For example, a performance leaderboard, competitions. So this is where people must be acknowledged, right? They say people who are performing well should be acknowledged also. So how do we do that? We do it by seeing each other's answers. And also, uh, another important thing that they mentioned here is, uh, uh, is recognition. And there was a point I'm forgetting. I'll, I'll mention that. Yes, I remember that. That point is looking at a specific place where we do our work. So setting up the uh, workstation at particular place so that efficiency increases. This is equally applicable for you as well. Set your, set your workstation at a particular place where you can dedicate yourself and you are segregated from the other casual activities at homes. Right now, this update is on digital payments. Digitization has happened, but we are not able to regulate uh, cryptocurrencies. Digitization has happened, but we are not able to effectively regulate cryptocurrencies. Very similar is the setup uh, uh, as compared to what happened in our uh, uh, you know revamp distribution sector scheme as well. Right, we initiated the scheme, but we are not able to regulate it. So very much uh, in news. Right, and a mere update about that same issue. All right, and the third editorial is on uh, uh, gaps. This is about uh, the, the digital gap, the budget gap in digital India schemes. 
it says that only few digital india schemes if given more money could re result into far more gdp growth for the country what are those so some of those schemes could be um, uh, designing infrastructure for health skill unified logistics interface and travel if we have some payments designated to only these particular four schemes health skilling unified logistics interface and travel this would increase the gdp of the country by 5% at least 5% but we have not given more payments to uh, the digital schemes in our budget so what do we need is digital public infrastructure right we covered this digital public goods in a feature news what these public goods are what do they mean to people how they should be provided free of cost to everybody including finances including services data privacy all of it included right so india needs this digital system but it is not present with us as of now all right we needed more layers not only technical layers so it says one important thing it says is that there is a technical layer but over the technical layer for example coding layer there are other layers right there are other layers of administration those layers also must be initiated right so non tech layer levels in the stack in order to realize the full potential of these platforms for example it's utility right uh, the layer for uh, privacy of people data sharing its monetization all of them are non technical layers right above it so full efficiency utilization is not happening right now data protection universal access accountability why here yeah. all right this is the update if you like this initiative share some love to like comments and shares this gentleman from uh, bulu imam from hazari bagh jharkhand is uh, preserving the old art of this particular place you see this art and i had visited some spaces some places in madhya pradesh as well uh, very very popular place near bhopal known for the oldest of paintings can you name that cave where these paintings are found the place is bhimbetka caves or open bhimbetka open rock structures and 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 the payment and the paintings are very similar to what we find in jharkhand right so paintings would illustrate those times how people would get into uh hunting of animals how they would save their lives and what were their custom how they would live their life with other species this is what we find in jharkhand as well the person has been uh, saving uh, the person has been uh, ensuring that these uh, uh paintings are well preserved in jharkhand those are the paintings which were actually preserved in from jharkhand itself they are, they are not the paintings from bhimbetka he is also received padma shri to people so there are people who are initiating this kind of work and they are also encouraging people to practice this art right so art not only demonstrated at homes but also ensuring that uh, uh, this is also given its due regard these are the art from the chalcolithic times so times when copper was also used chalcolithic time was before the iron age or after the iron age can somebody tell me that or was it alongside this is a question please tell me the answer of this in the feature news discussion for today our feature news discussion is on a very important topic that is plastic pact amongst the countries around the world all right if you like this initiative share some love through likes comments and shares bimbetka thank you so let's see you in the feature news discussion and tell me the answer of this question right there thank you for participating offline viewers please uh post your question so that we may be able to serve you thank you Babani, I already applied for. Okay, all right. Thank you for participating.